loves a fall. But what America even loves more than a fall Come is back. redemption and a comeback. It's such an interesting thing about America and what happens to the great ones. So, you know, a story like yours, when you're talking about the consequences you're willing to face, um, it's an interesting perspective. When you, when you think about a Tom Brady, do you, you see a killer instinct in a guy like that, right? But he was raised in a good family environment, right? You, if you watch Man in the Arena, mom, dad, you know, three older sisters, you wonder, like, is the killer instinct DNA? Is the killer instinct life experiences? Is the killer instinct it's choice? Interesting. It's interesting that you say that because um, we know some athletes that's number one and probably the best in the world mm -hmm. in Europe. Their families are billionaires, but their families can't buy that spot. <clears throat> Being the best, they can't buy it. So it's not money. It's the desire to win. It's so it's the individual you're. Yeah, normally when people um, are siblings of people that wealthy, they want to diff. They want to um, pretty much um, spit from them. They want their own identity. And sometimes they change their names because they want their own identity. They have their own self worth. How much, Mike? I want to stay on this to to just ask this question from him. When he became the youngest heavyweight, okay. And we're all watching. We're like, oh, my God. You know, they called it. Cuss called it. These were just, I guess heavyweight. Everybody's losing their minds, right? 20, 20 years old, 21 yeah. years old. Youngest ever heavyweight champion. Did that automatically attract other goats that wanted to be around you who were the champions? And if it did, which I'm assuming it did because we've seen the pictures with you pretty much mm -hmm. with everybody. Did you notice a similarity between your why Where you're like, oh, I see. I see Michael. Oh, I see Magic. Oh, I see Gretzky. Oh, I see Ali. Oh, I see, man, I, I kind of see a little bit of myself. And very interesting how we have these two, three things in common. Did you see that yourself or you weren't looking at it from that lens? No, because I really look at it not from a, um, if I'm, if I may be permitted to say, I just think that people from that perspective, it's just ordained by God. To happen like that, and it's not necessarily because we're athletes or entertainers. There are people who are the, um, pretty much uh, ordained by God to be the greatest businessmen, to be the greatest garbage men. It's just it's all from the universe, and we have nothing to do with it but just putting in the effort. Interesting. So it's a form of a you know being chosen or being called type of a thing. You think pretty that's much, what it I think. Is? I think Cus said he summoned me. You know, I'm going to meet this old Italian guy. Oh. Maybe he was right. Wow. You know, Patrick, most guys from the street <clears throat> that came up the hard way, they fold. Not many uh, guys make it. No. No. You know, you, it's something within you that makes you overcome that. you got to have a drive, a determination. Because most guys that come up like that, they're gone. A mentor, a great mentor. I had a good, the best mentor on the you planet. I, 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 nobody could do, do what he could. Nobody, but never, no one. Yeah. He was the greatest. Nobody yeah. can make sure you reach. Do you, do you in your house or your office or, you know, do you have a picture of him? Absolutely. Yeah. What's your yeah. favorite picture of you and him? Um, me yeah. hugging him. After a fight, or is it? Is it no, yes, um, for, for taking the picture. So it's a, it's a picture you have that yeah. we haven't seen. So no. It's not a public picture. I'm sure it is. Yeah. yeah. Got it. That's cool. To, you know, uh, it's. Uh, uh, which one is it? Do you see it? Is that the one on the right in front where? of the white building? No, where? Go I'll, back. You, I saw it. If you go yeah, back. It's that day. It's that day. No more. Rob, if it's you go back, I, yeah. just, you had it. Go back. It's too far to the far to the right, all the way to the right. Right there, up. Oh. Hey, thing. There it is. Oh, right there. And he's like, "Get off me!" He hates that. Get off, get off. Man, yeah. what are you doing? Get off. That's your favorite picture with. Cubs. Yeah, he's like, "Get off, stop!" He, he doesn't like interviews. He doesn't like this. Stuff. He's too hard. What do you What do you think about when you see that picture? Um, he was right. I'm the greatest ever. Wow. He was right. Pat, you bring up the Tom Brady thing, and yeah. obviously yeah. Tom Brady and Mike Tyson had a complete differing upbringing, not even a question. Um, but one thing they did have was a chip on their shoulders. So you bring up Tom Brady. 
drafted in the seventh round, 189th pick. You see the picture of when he was <laughs> drafted. He didn't even look, he looked like he was just some frat dude. His sisters with a good athlete. Exactly, right? Uh, yeah. right? So, but a chip on his shoulder. You look at MJ, the, the, you know, as the story goes, yeah. cut from his high school basketball team. Oh, holy holy shit, that just basically wound him up. He turned it. You look at Kobe, when you interviewed Kobe. Yeah. What happened with Kobe? He was number 40 something on the top 100 list of uh, high school basketball players. Boom, he developed a kill list. So, that's, yeah, there's the picture of Tom yeah. Brady. Doesn't look like the GOAT right there, does he? No. No. Turned out to be the greatest quarterback to ever live. There has to be some – even when you with business, when you went to the Army and they told you that you would never be nothing in your life, your teachers, you got a 1.8 GPA, you developed a chip on your shoulder that said, all right, I'm going to turn this thing around. So, Mike, what was it for you? I, I, I completely understand that Cuss was your uh, is your motivation everything that – but you must have had a chip on your shoulder. What was it that basically inspired you to say, all right, let me turn my life around and make this happen? I don't know. I just know this. In order to be a master, you first have to be a fool. Hmm. And then after that, it works out. You first have to be a fool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what does that mean? <laughs> Make mistakes. Make okay. mistakes and don't get uh, discouraged. It's so easy to get discouraged and give up. Yeah. This is kind of what Mike yeah, was man, saying. I've been knocked people... out before the average. I had a, nothing came easy for me. I didn't give up. Never. Like, how, how old were you for something you got knocked out? Like, actually knocked out? I was a little kid. How old? I don't know, 11. 11 years old? Yeah. Who was the guy? Oh, he hit me with a bat. What? Yeah, he hit me with a bat. He don't, they don't know our world. He hit me with a bat. That's how they do you. It's like normal, right? <laughs> As a matter of fact, the first time I got hit, we have something in common. Yeah. I got hit with a bat, and it broke two of my ribs. That, look, yes. See, that's how I like to be hit with bats, and people shoot at us at 11 years old. The key to success is getting hit by a bat. I got hit by a club. You remember the club yeah. in, the, in the cars, the clubs you used to put to... Steering wheels so they yeah, could park. Yeah, oh, yeah, I, I, I got hit in the club. I was wow. wrong. Oh, I was 18 years old man. in Kentucky. I'm like, damn. I saw somebody get hit with that too. Split it that's that too. I broke my nose. I wow. um, woke up 4 o'clock in the morning. Is that, is that what happened? That's one of the ways I wanted to. I broke my nose a few times. We always still cause you had to break that, that off first. That club was yeah. actually, it was old school wow. way. It's before we had uh, the oh, current The alarm yeah. stuff. I'll never forget the story when you guys did the interview at the MGM inside the, uh, wow. the ring, literally. And you were talking about wow. one of the first times that Mike, I don't know if this was one of the first, but when you really knew that you had power, you talked about that you fought the kid and then the father showed up. Yeah. And you're the <laughs> fighting the father. <laughs> Tell us that. So how old were you when you're fighting grown men? Um, I'm like 11, 12, but I was big. You know what I mean? I'm like 11 years old, but I'm 175 pounds. At 11? Yeah, 160. So, um... But I'm short sure, though, so I'm fighting the guy. I don't know if I'm fighting because I'm taking oh, something, trying to take something for him. That mostly that happens when you're fighting him oh, and his yeah, family. Yeah, so I'm yeah, trying yeah. to take something, maybe his jacket or his watch, yeah, something yeah. I'm trying to take. I'm just, I'm trifling like that back then. And then I, I, I was fighting with him, and I don't know if I snatched his coat off, but his father came running down the street. And when he was on the floor, his father just came and he started to try to throw. I picked him up, slammed him on the floor. <laughs> And um, the kid jumped on me from behind. <laughs> you know, yeah, I kicked yeah. the ass, but they oh, kicked my yeah. ass too. You know, the father got, son duo yeah, coming at Mike Tyson. Kinda, they got me good though. They got me good. <laughs> has, has that ever been? Uh, uh, they got me. They became my close friends too. How did that happen? I don't know. It's, that's what happened. You understand? You fight yes. your friend to the death, and me try to rob him, and then as time goes on, you guys become friends, and you guys rob other people. <laughs> right? Absolutely. <laughs> is that is that what happened? with you and Evander Holyfield. You guys are friends. I think you guys are working in business. Yes, in some yes, capacity. yes, yes, yes. Me, I always um, bust this chapter. Me and you are the only people still making money from a fight that happened 30 years ago. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> right? That's right, yeah. How did that friendship develop? Because at one point, you guys were as competitive yeah. as enemies as it gets, right? We were always friends. I knew him since I was 17 years old. You know, from the boxing scene. And... Um, I had made Look these ears. Um, Can you pull up the ear down, company that they launched? Hold right, Holy bites. There. Yes. And um, show a picture of it, the product. If you can. Rob, Mike Tyson asked you to show a picture, buddy. You read? There it goes. Like, yeah, the ear. And um, 
What? They were going off the hook, and he was a little offended. He was a little offended at first, and then he, and then he, and the whole time, why you doing this to me, man? He was a little offended until he saw the profit of it. He saw that profit. Said, hey, I'm, I'm with you. You might have taken. Oh, you're thirty of it. <laughs> Yo, listen, can I, can I really ask you a question? Why, how like, um I'm trying to think the word. Satanic people are so happy. Yeah, you better, mother, Yeah, what the? We have savages. We live in a country of savages. You know that, right? First of all, first time I saw it, I'm like, what? What you could fight? If you watched them, did you watch the fight live or no? Live? No, I mean, I wasn't there, I was there but I was seven I was years old. Yeah, yeah. you're seeing it, you're like, what? oh, you were at the actual I was fight. At the fight, yes. With Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield. <laughs> wow. It was me and uh, Chuck Zito and <laughs> Stallone. We were all there that night. What a, what was the reaction? How long did it take for the audience to know what happened? Oh, it was crazy. Yeah. I, I don't think, I didn't know right away what happened. Didn't understand it. But then we were hearing things, you know, because I was in like the third or fourth row. We were hearing things. And then, then obviously everybody knew after that. But, you know, what happened afterwards, though, you know, I was with, I was with my wife, too. And the place went crazy afterwards. I told her, we're not leaving here. Just sit here yeah. until everybody leaves and everything gets calmed down. But that yeah, was crazy. Uh, I know the world without Mike is crazy, huh? <laughs> you, you said you made 30 million 